Hey guys, it's Aaron. We have a video coming out later this week from Basecamp 2018 with John Brock talking about constructability modeling. One of the things John does is he creates these great detailed architectural models, or actually framing models, that shows all the framing, all the correct details, the way roofs come together, floors come together, the whole thing. He basically builds, frames the entire thing inside a SketchUp before anything goes out to the field. It's a great, great thing to see, especially if you have any design process or construction process that you are a part of and you want to optimize or make it better. So check that out later on this week. Um, today, what I wanted to take a look at is there's a lot of great stuff that John talks about, the way that he uses SketchUp. He has some awesome extensions, but one of the things I really wanted to look at, and you guys have actually asked about this, is roof modeling. So I'm going to throw out a couple of tips on modeling a quick roof on top of these walls. So let's go ahead and hop right in. So in here, I have two sets of walls. I have this higher set of walls, lower set of walls. Um, I want to do this one fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a gable roof right here, run that across. We'll just have a big gable roof here. We'll do another gable roof here. It's going to tie back into the main roof. So I'm going to model that as two separate pieces right now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is come up with a profile of what the trusses would look like here, or the truss shape. This could be stick framed or uh, joist or whatever, but uh, I want to come up with what this sloped roof is going to look like. I'm going to come down to one corner here, and I'm going to start by putting on my heel height, how tall off the wall to the top of the roof, and I'm going to say that's 12 inches. And now I need to have a line sloping up. So if I was real good at math, I could go find the midpoint, bring this up, and based on this span at a 612 slope, I could calculate what that is, including the change in height for this uh, heel. I could figure all that out, but I am not good at math, so I can't do that. What I'm going to do instead is let SketchUp figure out what I need for me. I'm going to draw a line. doesn't really matter how long it is. I want it to be longer than what's needed when this is sloped up at 612 to get past the center point, basically. So I'm just going to draw a line almost the full length, and then I'm going to use rotate. So with rotate, I'm going to hit the right arrow key to lock to the red axes. I'm going to grab this point, and I'm going to start bringing it up. Now, again, depending on where you're at, how you define your slopes is going to change. If you're in a spot where you just type in the angle, the degree, that's great. You can just type it in right now. See right now I'm down, I'm at 30 degrees right now. If that was what I needed, I could hit enter. If I needed 32 degrees, I could type that in. If I'm working in North America, where the slope is normally designated as a number over 12, I can put that in too by typing six colon 12. By putting that in, I'm gonna get a 612 slope and I hit enter and there we go. All right. I don't want to do this twice, so I'm going to go to the midpoint of the wall and drag a line straight up along the blue axis till it intersects that line. There we go. Now we have half of this half of the roof. Almost. Almost the whole thing. Only piece we're missing right now is the overhang. So I'm going to come draw that geometry in too. I want to get as much of this done as I can in one piece before I start uh, push-pulling anything. So the thing about overhangs is with it's real easy with inferencing to kind of pick up the purple or magenta line and carry it on down this way. The issue with that is overhangs aren't generally measured along the slope. They're measured horizontally from above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two lines. I'm going to draw a line this way. I'm going to say 24 because it's a two foot overhang. And then I'm going to drop a line straight down. This line right here, I don't actually need this, but this line right here is where this overhang will run to. So I can bring it down like this. Now I can actually use that magenta line to come down and intersect. That is my overhang right now. The other piece that's missing here, obviously, I have a top of my overhang material, but I don't have the bottom. Now, depending on how this is framed, that may come off of this corner. It may be down a little bit further. It may be up higher. I'm going to say that this is a uh, truss framed roof and I have a two by six top cord that's creating this overhang. So how do I get that? I don't just come here, two by six is uh, five and a half inches. I don't just draw down five and a half inches and draw it back because that measure, that, that five and a half inches is perpendicular to the length of the material. That's the material width. So what I can do is, and this is just a real quick way, this is the way I would do this 
just to get this number in here is I would click on a point on the line. I chose the midpoint and I'll just go perpendicular, type 5.5 and hit enter. And now I have that line. So I can actually use this, this inferencing off that purple line to draw back here and then pull that out to the overhang. And I can delete these extra lines. And that is my profile of that half of the roof. Now I need to get it on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use rotate again. This time I'm gonna to snap to the blue axes, hit the modifier key option, spin it around, delete that middle line. And now I can grab that and push pull it all the way to the opposite side. I'll go through the same process to put that on the front and then push pull that in and do some intersecting. Now to save myself some time, I might do something like this grab this shape, option to copy, move it over here. Then I'll just use rotate to spin it 90 degrees. And I can put that right on that front wall. Obviously I need to break it in the middle again. So I'm going to use the bottom of the wall, bring it up, delete these two extra lines, grab this shape, again, blue axes, modifier key to copy. And with that, I've created it. Now, as, as I start to pull back, there's a couple spots I could stop. I could stop at the overhang. I could stop at the wall. I want to go through so it goes all the way through. There we go. Now, at this point, if I had gone in and made these solids, I might be able to use solid tools. Or the other option, I have a real simple, clean seam around here. I can just click trace the intersections then, use those intersection points, those little red X's, to just trace all the way around every intersection here and actually have my two pieces of line, my ridge lines, my valley lines, my overhangs, all buttoned up. Final step in this case is gonna to be to flip on the inside, hop inside here, and then I can just double click on this back face, delete, and then get rid of the extra lines. I'll do a little deleting right here to clean up where those two roofs connect together. And there we go with that. Pretty quick, pretty easy uh, overlapping shed roof. Got some overframing, overhangs, all that stuff's in there. So, so there you go. Just a quick example of where you could put in some roofs in SketchUp. Obviously, there's other options out there, um, but this is kind of just some basics for roof input inside of SketchUp. Um, hopefully you like that. If so, go ahead, like it down below. Subscribe, that would be notified when John's video comes out later this week. And leave us a comment. Did you like this idea of putting in roofs? Are there other types of roofs you'd like to see? If so, leave us a comment down below. We like making these videos, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.